Would you like to have a lot of money and not work a day? To live in a luxurious castle? To be an owner of the most thoroughbred horses and the sweetest corgi? To be famous all over the world? Well, only people who belong to the Windsor royal family can afford it. But as Uncle Ben said, With great power comes great responsibility. Not everyone will be able to live by the rules that are established for royalty. Are you sure you want to give it a try? Well, then get used to the title, and welcome to the world of princes and princesses. So you've been born, and like any other child, you don't understand at all what is happening, and your life in infancy is quite monotonous. Here the royal family has no special differences. I mean, well, they're not bees, if you understand what we mean. But at some point, your life ceases to be the life of just a child. Very early on, you discover that you're different from all other children, that you're practically like a superhero. You have to follow certain rules, hundreds of different rules, and some of them will surely seem absurd. You won't be able to spend time with friends the way ordinary children do. No ball games in the yard with your neighbors, and you can't just visit your friends or go to the playground. It seems that even the usual pranks are strictly regulated. No matter how many good friends you make, you'll always remain a member of the royal family with a special position. For example, most people have best friends, those you can rely on in any situation. You can call them even at night if something bothers you, and it'll be okay. Or you can ask them to come over or to borrow clothes. But if you belong to the royal family, there will be no such thing, never. While you're very young, most of your time will be spent with the nanny. Your parents are always busy. After all, they're officials. They have a lot of important business trips and various events in their diary which must be attended. If you don't have any brothers or sisters, the nanny may be your only company. But don't imagine any nice old lady who bakes pies and pats you on the cheek. The woman who looks after Catherine and William's children graduated from the prestigious Norland College, and she's considered one of the most popular nannies in the country. She knows how to sew, cook, change diapers and look after the kids but also this nanny is very good at self-defense she can professionally provide first aid and she also knows how to escape from terrorists or kidnappers and although the royal mary poppins is not an elite fighter she'll do anything to protect the future king or queen the security of the royal family always comes first Every prince, princess, and also the owners of other titles, they're all surrounded by bodyguards. They may not follow them around the house, but they're always somewhere nearby, especially if it's some kind of official event. Even at the club, Prince Harry went in the company of security. Pretty reasonably, right? But there are other strangers and even more offensive rules. For example, you as a member of the royal family can receive expensive gifts. Anything. A car, a giraffe, the coolest game console. Everything that ordinary children and adults lessons can only dream about. But from that whole pile of gifts, well, you can keep just a book. Yes, the one written by your second cousin's aunt, or for example, flowers. Who needs those flowers after all? But you'll have to give up the rest because otherwise, the royal family will have some obligations to the giver. However, you'll probably not even realize that some things are unrealistically expensive and some cost only a couple of cents. And that's because the royal children don't perceive money as we do. For example, Prince Charles didn't even know what the pound was until he became a teenager. Nevertheless, the royal family has a lot of money, and therefore they can spend a lot of money. Usually, the sums are counted in millions of dollars, but princes and princesses also bring the treasury a good income, usually due to tourism. For example, the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle brought the UK economy almost one and a half billion dollars. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. And wife. And wife. So back to the strange rules. Royal children can only wear certain things, and it's always something official. No superhero t-shirts or trendy sneakers. The future king or queen of England must look appropriate at home, at events, and at school. Yes, they go to school like everyone else and face different school problems. When Prince William was eight years old, he was hit with a golf club. Wait, how many schools do you know where there's a golf course? You got it all right. If you're a royal child, then you should study in the most expensive schools in the world, where there's everything you want. As classmates, you'll have other rich children. It's no wonder that, in the end, you'll get the best education on the planet. That's why, even before admission to school, little princes and princesses are much better educated than their peers. They are well-educated, and they strictly follow the rules of etiquette. 
Imagine how many of them are in the royal family. In addition, every royal child from childhood learns foreign languages and not to kill time, but with a serious purpose. The queen speaks fluent French, and it is believed that she was taught this language as a child. Cet anniversaire donne un sens particulier à ma visite d'état. La quatrième que j'ai effectue en France. The Queen's children also speak it, and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren speak Swahili, Welsh, and Spanish. All this is very useful, but imagine how lazy you'll be to learn the language when you're a child and just want to play in the garden. By the way, if a royal child grows up and goes to the army, he immediately gets the officer's rank. Why? He's a member of the reigning house. It wasn't done in the wrong way, but it was just... And what about the rule to never travel together with other potential heirs to the throne? That is, if you want, for example, to go on vacation with your family, then everyone will have to travel separately. And this rule has a rather logical explanation. If there's a crash, all the heirs to the throne won't die at once. However, to all appearances, not everyone observes this harsh rule today. For example, Prince William often travels with his wife and children, but they're allowed to do so by the queen herself. So you can't argue with that. A lot of things in the royal family happen by the will of the queen, but some things just have a strictly established order, which has hasn't been changed for centuries. You can, of course, dream of becoming a vet, for example, or dancing ballet or becoming a fireman. Perhaps the family even nods and says something approving, but nothing more. You'll never be able to choose any of these professions, and you won't do it the way any other person would. Your life doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the crown, and often this means too much responsibility for each of the family members, even if it's just a child. When the mother of Prince Harry, Princess Diana, died, he was only 12 years old. However, according to tradition, he had to participate in the funeral procession. Harry was walking down the streets of London with his brother, father, and grandfather. And this episode caused him a deep psychological trauma. The guy just lost his mother. He had to follow her coffin surrounded by thousands of people who watched his grief closely. Add the TV broadcast and it'll turn out that the whole world was watching this poor boy. As Harry himself later said, no child should be subjected to such a test, not under any circumstances. Perhaps all of these difficulties will seem like nonsense to you compared to the chance to take the throne. But first of all, for this to happen, you have to wait your turn, and it's usually huge. And secondly, no one in the royal family really wants to become king or queen. Anyway, this is what the same Prince Harry said in an interview with Newsweek. Each member of the royal family is ready one day to take on such responsibility, but no one dreams of such a thing. Probably they have enough problems without the status of monarch. Yes, there are indeed many privileges for members of the royal family, but you can never do what you really want. In any case, do something and keep it secret. Each of the future kings or queens is monitored almost around the clock. And unfortunately, we aren't talking about security. We mean paparazzi. And today, they're waiting for members of the royal family everywhere. And the pictures are instantly sent to the media and the internet. It feels as if you're constantly being watched. Perhaps the Windsors are the only modern stars whose popularity cannot pass with time. This means that the paparazzi's interest never wanes. By the way, it's believed that the first British paparazzi was Ray Belisario. And even then, he wasn't particularly popular. Princess Margaret even once called him this damn Belisario. And we can understand her. But princes and princesses are surrounded not only by bodyguards and paparazzi. As they grow older, they have advisors. And the more serious the position a person of royal blood takes, the more helpers he or she has. But how, in this case, can you understand what decision will really be yours, not one imposed by one of the advisors, and how not to lose your identity in this incredible number of rules and restrictions? Probably everyone, at least once in their life, thought about being born in another family, some kind of more appropriate, or maybe even a royal family. But if you imagine someone else's life and really immerse yourself in it, it becomes clear. It's nothing like your family. I don't like it here at all. I miss my family. And no royal crown is worth parting with. And you know what? Members of the royal family are not allowed to play Monopoly. Honestly, this is one of the strangest prohibitions we've encountered. After all, it's just a board game. Hey, but then again, if you've ever played it, you know how it can end up. Nobody needs a civil war.